The effort is on to get us all healthy, to get us vaccinated, so that we can all see some sort of light at the end of this tunnel. Talking today to Dr. Karen Kennedy of Mercy Health, works in family medicine. Hello, Dr. Kennedy. Hello, Lila, how are you? Thank you so much for talking to us today. Tell me, first of all, have you been vaccinated? I have not been vaccinated yet, but not because I don't want the vaccine. I have been looking to see how the side effects to the vaccine have gone, because usually in my case, Dr. Karen Kennedy, not for everyone else, in my case, a lot of times I get really strange reactions to different things, medications, vaccines, that kind of thing. I'm not opposed to the vaccine. I'm almost ready to get it. I'm going to sign up soon. But I just wanted to make sure what the side effects were for people like me. And I've gotten more information on that since I'm a doctor. And it's helped me out a lot, too. So it's nothing horrible. And I'm ready to get the vaccine. And as long as you delved into that and you're looking at side effects, who needs to be a little more cautious? Especially people who have had reactions, and especially if you've had an anaphylactic reaction, meaning that your throat closed up, you got a really big rash, you got huge swelling um, you know, reactions, that kind of thing. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can't have the vaccine. It just means that maybe you should ask some more questions of your uh, provider to see whether or not you need to be watched a little bit more when you're getting your vaccine vaccine for COVID. Uh, for example, usually we watch people for 15 minutes after they get the vaccine. For people who have reactions, we'll watch them for 30 minutes because sometimes it'll take a little longer for them to develop uh, a, a reaction. We haven't lost anyone, <laughs> but just make sure that if you do have these kind of reactions to make sure you, you tell someone and then we know what to do for you. So it's good to speak to a doctor who's overly cautious mm -hmm. because there are people who are overly concerned. But what would you say to the general citizen who's in pretty good health um, about the vaccine? The vaccine, like all the other vaccines that you've heard of, the ones that uh, children get, the ones that we get for pneumonia, for example, are used to help and prevent disease. I'm not teaching you anything you probably don't know, but vaccines are not inherently harmful. We're not giving this to harm you. <laughs> We're giving this to help and prevent something from spreading and causing more of an issue. In this pandemic, the vaccine has been developed a lot quicker than usual because this is an emergency, worldwide emergency. This isn't just something in one state. So things are being done a little bit differently than people are used to. Uh, so I can understand that there's a little bit of hesitation um, with wanting to get the vaccine. But for people who usually do fine with vaccines and have received them before, even if you haven't, but especially those people who have, I would encourage and the medical community would encourage you to please do this. Uh, many people may have heard about something called herd immunity, H-E-R-D immunity. What that is, is that if there's a certain amount of people in a certain, I don't know, country, say the United States, if we get a certain amount of people vaccinated against this particular virus, it drastically decreases the damage that it does to anyone else, including yourself. But you have to get up to a certain number of people that are vaccinated against this vaccine. So if we have a lot of people that are suspect or just don't wanna get it, or they don't believe COVID is really a thing, then it, it becomes more difficult to control this virus in particular. So I would say to do your due diligence, ask the questions that you want if, if you have questions, um, ask of, of trusted providers, ask it of the medical community, such as the CDC, which I've mentioned before, right? Because everyone's on Twitter and Facebook and you know, we're all trying to look for information, but go to the key people that really should be giving you the information and then make a decision for yourself. We in the medical community have seen a lot with this, uh, uh, with this virus. People are dying of this virus. They're getting side effects from the virus. Even if they get COVID afterwards, they have all of these other symptoms afterwards. So don't think, hey, I'll just get it and that'll be fine. Please, we, we do implore that people do get the vaccine and help out everyone around them as well. Within several minority communities, including African American, Latino, uh, Native American, there is some understandable skepticism. And skepticism, not only about the vaccine, but about following what the government tells us to do. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people to reassure them that this vaccine is not only effective, but necessary? I can understand why they may feel that way. You know, for example, for anyone who hasn't heard about it, um, 
back before uh, I was born and even into when I was born, which I can't believe, they were um, in the medical community conducting studies on African-Americans who had syphilis. Um, they already had a cure for syphilis, but they were just watching it to see what it would do if it just went untreated. And that wasn't right, that wasn't correct. And it harmed many people. Um, and that, uh, that was called the Tuskegee experiment. I believe it ended sometime in the early 70s. I can't believe, every time I tell this, I can't believe that that happened even when I was alive. <laughs> and it's not funny, I'm smiling because I'm just shocked that they would do that. But various things of that kind of nature where uh, a certain class of human being just isn't really seen as being that important to really give them something that's already, you know, for the rest of the, uh, the country. So there's a lot of skepticism amongst, especially the African-American community. There are people from, say, other countries or uh, people who have just been maligned in other ways for whatever reason in, in this country who don't feel that they'll either be getting the true vaccine or they'll be getting something else other than what they're calling the vaccine. So uh, what I would say to them is, well, let's see, there are many things I can say. One is, is that everyone on the planet, I think even in Antarctica and the North Pole <laughs> has been affected by COVID. Um, we all have tried to develop a vaccine to help everyone um, that, that we can. Uh, we need more vaccine, but everyone that we can get it to, we're trying to get it to. Please try to understand that there are those of us who are in your particular culture, like I'm Black as well. Um, there are also people who are Black who helped to develop one of the vaccines. I don't know if everyone knows that, and uh, they've shown her face from time to time, brilliant young lady, and she's helped as well. I hardly think that she would try to do something to harm you as well. But even if she wasn't involved, um, we would like for you to, uh, to get the vaccine also because this, this virus has harmed the communities that you mentioned, Lila, in greater degrees than in others, simply because of lack of access to healthcare, sometimes lack of information, sometimes they're in particular jobs where they can't socially distance. So they're in a job where they have to go to work and be around different people, and then they're more at risk for these. I know in Michigan that uh, at one point, forty percent of the positives were African American patients. Here in Grand Rapids, about close to thirty percent of the positives were of Hispanic origin. So we're really trying to capture and 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 help this particular type of community and make sure that they get what they need as well. We understand what you're talking about with things that happened in the past, but we're in the present and we're looking to the future now. We have to move forward and we really implore you to get the vaccine. Let's talk family. When you're speaking to your own parents, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, what are you telling them about COVID and about the vaccine? So good question. So I tell them the same thing that I tell my patients. Please don't see, please don't think that I tell them anything different. I try to teach everything to my patients the way I would teach my, my parents and friends and family as well. But I understand the question. Um, COVID is, I'll start off by saying way worse than the flu because it's deadlier than the flu. That's the first thing I'll say because I think that there's um, a, a, a notion that, hey, well, you know, we'll, we'll just get it and we'll be fine and, you know, we'll just move on. Or, you know, I don't get the flu shot because it gives me the flu, so I'm not going to get the COVID shot because it's going to give me COVID. So, no, that's incorrect. Even with the flu, this is a killed, you know, the, the flu virus is a killed virus. It's not something that's a live virus that's going to give you anything. The same thing with the COVID vaccine. It's a different type of vaccine. It's not a killed virus. It's what's called an mRNA virus. The M is messenger. It's kind of like the mailman giving you, uh, you know, giving you letters. Um, the mailman isn't harming you. They're giving you the letter so that you can get information and protect yourself. You know, you can look at it that way. So that's what I tell my patients and my family. Um, my mom is wonderful. She's of geriatric age. She is in the phase that they are giving vaccines to now. So she's asked me questions. My brother who's with her has asked some questions also as to whether or not she should get it. Which vaccine should we get? Should we wait to get it from our doctor or should we get it right now? Those kind of questions. I tell them to number one, um, do your due diligence and also do your reading. Try to contact people like me who have information. Um, uh, and two, 
Uh, once you get that information, if you still have hesitation, try to find someone that uh, addresses that hesitation. There will be people that still won't get the vaccine for whatever reason. Hopefully those are outliers. Can't force anyone to get it, but you're helping not only yourself, but those around you. If you don't get the vaccine, and that's the big deal, right? Uh, you know, we're very, everyone wants to help the world. And, you know, if you ask them questions about if they care about their fellow man, they'll say that they do, but this is how you do it. You get the vaccine to decrease the risk of getting it in yourself. And if you do get it, you, you decrease the risk of actually getting bad symptoms as well. So this is what I'm telling my family and my friends and, and those around me. What do you think about this pandemic? What we've been through in the nearly a year? Um, how these 12 months have been? What goes through your head and your heart? It's psycho. Okay, that's the word I'm using. It is mega ultra psycho. <laughs> I was a, a resident in family medicine back when 9-11 happened and I was in New Jersey and I'm from New York, right? So we're like an hour from New York. And at the time, I thought that was psycho. That was freaky. You know, almost like aliens were coming to the world or something like what's happening right now. That was the craziest thing in medicine that had happened to me because we were expecting a whole hospital full of people, even though we were in New Jersey, we were just over, over the water, you know, coming to uh, or over the border, coming to New Jersey. And we didn't really get too many people because unfortunately so many people died. I couldn't get in contact with my mom, my brother, because the, the phones weren't working. I mean, there's a whole list of things I could tell you. So I just say that to say that I thought that was crazy. But that was Pennsylvania and New York, um, you know, and everyone mourned for us, but it wasn't the entire world. And we didn't shut down everything. And we weren't fighting for toilet paper. What the heck is that? What? Who? <laughs> Why would I, Dr. Karen Kennedy, be fighting for toilet paper? Anyway, um, not that I'm better than anyone else, but what? anyway, so psycho. Um, I will tell you this, though. I think that a lot of the things and a lot of the deaths that have happened because of, the, uh, of this virus could have been prevented if we in our communities, not just medical, but in our communities, washed our hands, stayed home when we were sick and did socially distance, even with the flu. Like even if we didn't have this um, COVID uh, crisis right now, 10 years ago, we could have decreased flu deaths. We could have decreased time out of work for having colds and other kinds of illnesses. Um, you know, other, other, uh, other things, not even respiratory issues, but uh, things that are passed on. If you go to the bathroom, you know, wash your hands. We could have decreased, you know, mitigated the deaths in this country just from doing that, let alone anything else. So that's one thing that I'll say is that it could have, the actual virus may have come to the United States or to other countries, but I think if we had that together, just normal, normal public health advisories uh, actually followed, we could have decreased the, the, the deaths and the illnesses um, that we've seen. What's your hope? What's your hope that of the good that might come out of this? What's your hope after 2020? I think that, I know thank you for that question because I have mentioned even to friends and some family that 2020 was this unprecedented year, but I think it has helped in an enormous way in several ways. People actually learning a lot about the virus, the vaccine, um, the politics around it, the uh, how public health works, what it is that you need to do to protect others. I would talk to any random person on the street and they happen to know a lot about COVID-19. That's amazing. I thought that was incredible. That was one thing that came out of this pandemic that I thought was great is that people actually tried to learn. And I actually heard some good things. Not everybody's you know, into the conspiracy theories and all. They were actually presenting things that made sense to me, like they were doctors too. I was so proud of that. I hope that we go into this, <laughs> I hope we go into this year and afterwards doing the same thing. Don't simply accept something that presents itself in front of you. We in the medical community don't do that either. We analyze things and try to look at truth. Two plus two equals four. If it says it equals five and it looks kind of funny to you, hey, research it. Don't just take it because, you know, your sister told you, like, look it up. So that's one good thing that came out of 2020. I think more people are washing their hands, more people are 
wearing masks uh, because a lot of times it's been mandated and it's recommended. But I think people have learned that you decrease the amount of spread of this disease so things can change. You can actually get your kids back in school. You can get back into restaurants. Um, you know, life opens up a little bit when you do the right thing. Um, you know, the governor and uh, Janae Khaldun, our medical executive, have given a lot of information about how the things that we're doing are helping to decrease the risk of, of transmission and that we can actually go out and do things again. It's not like it was before just yet, but little by little with the things that we do, we can help that. So I think that people have noticed that also. I am glad for those of us who made it. I am so sorry for those of us who did not through that, through that trying time. But at least we can pass things on to others, whatever it is that we've learned. Um, and hopefully it'll, it'll help others to, to, to tie to their primary care providers, especially if they don't have one yet. Maybe it's encouraged them to seek out a primary care provider to have discussions about all kinds of things, not just the virus. So I think those are maybe three things that I can think to tell you. If there's one thing that people can learn from this in terms of their own health, what would that really smart message be? Stay educated and pay attention to the correct sources for that education. I say that because I'm not just speaking as a doctor in the medical field. I'm talking about anything, about food, about um, building, about the arts, that kind of thing. Educate yourself, ask questions, and don't accept things as quickly as we used to in the past. Pay attention to trusted advisors, um, trusted entities. You know, in this case, it would be, I mentioned the CDC or the National Institutes of Health or your, your state health organizations, that kind of thing. But if it's other things as well in life, try to pay attention to those instead of just willy-nilly believing what, what people say or what you want to believe. It can harm others and it's just not right. Do the right thing. And the importance of having that quarterback for your own health, that primary care physician. Yes. Can you send that message, please? Yes, so your primary care provider, we are called primary care providers because we're like the frontline providers that help to get you to other providers as well, if you need them. And we are very much into preventative health. We don't like to wait for things to happen. We don't wanna wait for you to have a heart attack before you come to us. On TV, that's sexy TV. We like the boring TV where everyone gets vaccinated and everyone doesn't have a heart attack and they actually eat properly and their diabetes is wonderful. You know, we like boring TV. <laughs> so be 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 mindful of the fact that there are those out there that are championing championing things for you and are on your side. And I would thoroughly encourage people if they don't have a PCP, which is a primary care provider, to reach out to their insurance company and find out who it is that they may be linked to and we can have these conversations. That's probably one of the best things you could do during this pandemic. Dr. Karen Kennedy, thank you so, so much. And I hope you get vaccinated soon. Yes, I will. And I want everyone else to, too. Join me. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank Stay you, healthy. Lila.